Warning, what you're about to see is footage of a life-threatening creature taken by a professional. Under no circumstances should you ever, ever attempt this action on your own without a certified professional. Also flashing lights. They're found in the backyards of everyone's homes. They scavenge throughout the night, finding the juiciest greens around town and taking pleasure with every bite. Although they may have many predators, their population just keeps on growing at uncontrollable speeds. Impossible to prevent, and yet we never seem to be able to find them. And then we domesticated them! Now they're one of the world's most popular pets. We still struggle to keep their numbers under control, but hey, they're so adorable! And trainable! Okay, but Hidden, what about, uh, you know, those cats and dogs? You can train them! Well, you see, I prefer the ones with the large ears. To really understand the bunny, you gotta... be the bunny. And that's what I did! Introducing the suspects, ooh, 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 yeah, yeah. Here we go. This is Petra, a crossbred rabbit between a mini rex and eastern cottontail. Her regular day-to-day -day schedule goes something like this. Wake up, rattle the cage, get fed and watered, chillax for seven hours, demand attention, demand sugar foods, rattle the cage some more, attempt to break out of enclosure, and finally, go to sleep at 1 a.m. Hey. <sighs> Petra, it's midnight, go to bed. Recently, I've been attempting to train her. Yeah, that's right train this thing. After all, the bunny wants attention, and I make it way more interesting for the both of us. But now y'all probably yelling at me something like, Okay, buddy, listen. I get that you're interested in this. But it's a rabbit! A rabbit! You can't train a rabbit! How exactly do you train the large ears? Ooh, ooh. Mysterious sounds, ooh. Motivation is key. The only way we train ourselves to learn is to feel motivated to do something. For us, that motivation is usually cash, but rabbits don't think like us. Or have a currency system. Okay look, I'll pay you $20 if you clean my bedroom. For the large ears, we need another motivator. Rabbits like to eat. Like, a lot. I rebuilt your hay like 20 minutes ago! But they especially like things with more sugar in them. We can't feed them the candy we like. But we can feed him th other things such as carrots, grapes, a banana, apple pieces, grapevine stem- Excuse me, you're eating the set. <laughs> As evidently proven, Petra likes a lot of these, but apples are her favorite. So, we use that as a motivator. To use the motivator correctly, it's much like how you would train a dog. Have the treat ready in hand and make sure they know you have it. Then ask them to do something. When they have achieved that action, give them the treat immediately afterwards. Repeating this process a couple of times will engrave it into their brain, and soon they'll figure out when they do said action, they receive the sugary good. Hi Petra. Hello. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna open up the fridge. There's an apple in here. Very carefully. I'm gonna cut a bit off. I'm gonna actually move my... See? You're learning. Let's go, let's go. Beginning with the basics, so exciting, woohoo. Starting with basic skills builds the foundation for the better stuff. We can't just jump to conclusions and assume the rabbit will be able to accomplish anything we say. Chair. I give up. Much like we're teaching a newborn child how to walk, we have to teach them the basic skills and help them along the way. Some of these basic skills for the large ear may include telling them to go to where your foot or finger points, asking them to return to their cage, or maybe telling them to stay and come. Have more than just one skill to work on. I've had cases where Petra thinks she's smart by going into her cage when I'm near it, but I'm pointing my foot to a different area. Blanket. 
blanket. That's not blanket. Blanket's over there. Not this. Don't reward this, as it just encourages them to do the thing you didn't ask for. Make them think, not just assume. Set a final goal. A final goal for you and your rabbit. If there isn't a final destination or a final objective, then there's really no point in training them. They might as well just continue with Petra's schedule all day and all night long. Go. To. Bed. Okay, finally. Now for the better stuff. Let's go. We made it. All the success. Remember that final goal you totally made? Well, it's about time we bring that back and accomplish said goal. In my case, I want to train Petra to jump onto this chair. I have no idea why I want this, but that was my final goal from the beginning. In this case, I want her to jump onto the chair whenever I point to it. We may be here a while. The only thing I should point out is to make sure that this final goal is within their skill set. Guess I probably should have pointed that out a little earlier. Asking them to deliver a tray full of lemonades to you and your friends may be a bit far for the rabbits. Though that would be pretty cool. Simple skills, such as snuggling up to you when you're feeling lonely, or feeling relaxed when young children come to visit and want to pet, would be good skills to go for. If you want to go the extra mile, perhaps bunny agility. And yes, it's a thing. Look it up. You know, just a, just a few little tips and bits of information you should probably know when doing this. So, we've gone over the basics, how to train them, and a few other random details I probably forgot about. All this is nice, but there are some things to point out. Just, you know, a few minor details and bits of important information. Number one, don't overfeed. Fat rabbits do not do well when it comes to training. Number two, keep training sessions short. Their attention span lasts for about five minutes at best. If even that. Number three, keep them interested. Don't repeat the same skills forever, much like dogs. The motivation and wanting to do new skills will only last so long. Boredom is no fun for anyone. Number four, okay fine, I'll act more upbeat for this one. Happy and healthy. Keeping them happy and healthy builds a close bond with you and your long-eared friend. Besides, they're less motivated and happy when they're sick. And there's probably more information I missed, but I can't think of it at this moment. So you're on your own from there. It's over. Ah. Ah. The best moments you have as a human are the moments you spend with your friends and when you are having fun. Your bunny, believe it or not, is your friend. The moments you spend training together are the moments they'll remember. They're the moments they created with you. And they remember them because they want to. They are your friend. With enough training, patience, and a tight bond, it's only a matter of time until a miracle between you two happens. And it's always so exciting the first time.